Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a live broadcast of WBFR, Playhouse of the Air. We thank you for braving the weather this Christmas Eve, and you'll be glad you did when you hear the story we have for you tonight. It's a wonderful life. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, this evening's programs is being broadcast live from coast to coast, and our listeners are counting on your reactions as a part of their listening pleasure. So don't be shy, and feel free to applaud, laugh, swoon, or cry just as loudly as the spirit moves. I'm getting the signal from our stage manager that we'll be going live on the air in just less than three minutes, which allows me just enough time to introduce you to the fine acting ensemble who will be performing this evening's entertainment. I give you Mr. Chad Falker, Mr. Cornelius Williamson III, Mrs. Shirley Aniston, Mr. Bill Hoggs, Mr. Swift Taylor, Miss Lucille Goose. Miss Jennifer Walters. Mrs. Riley Anderson. Mrs. Alex Skye. Mrs. April Sawyers. Mr. Sean Glow. Mr. Ben Tenderson. Mr. Bora Jolie. And Mr. Jimmy Saunders. And I'll be your host for this evening, Freddie Fillmore. I'm getting the signal from our stage manager that we'll be going on the air in 20 seconds. Thank you all for coming this evening, and enjoy the broadcast. We are live in five, four, WBFR in New York City. This is WBFR Playhouse of the Air. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, young and old, old and new. Greetings from WBFR Studio A in Manhattan, New York right here in the U.S. of A. I'm your host, Freddie Fillmore, and it's my pleasure to bring you your favorite stories this and every week on WBFR Playhouse of the Air. Tonight, we bring you a real feel-good heartwarmer perfect for this or any Christmas Eve. It's a wonderful life. We begin our story in the little town of Bedford Falls, New York, U.S. of A, where a number of people in the town are praying for their dear friend, a typical American dreamer named George Bailey. Dear God, please look over my husband, George. George is a good boy. You know that. My son has always gone out of his way to brother's hand. Now it's him who needs the help. Help my big brother, George. He's done so much for us all. More for me than I can remember. I remember all the times you stayed late after work. He nods to sit. The world needs more. George Bailey never thinks about himself. I wouldn't have a roof over my head. If it wasn't for him, I would have given up long ago. All I think about is myself. I must have taken the last sentence. He had no sense of business that George Bailey. Just like his father. None of the Bailey's were ever businessmen. It's his own fault if he wasn't prepared. That's uh, my fault. I don't think it's all my fault. Help your father. It's me who's putting him through all this. Something's the matter with Daddy. Should we pray for the mommy? Yes, Suzu. Pray. Pray very hard. The voices carry heavenward, and Joseph, the superintendent of angels, summons Clarence, an apprentice angel. You want to send for me, sir? Yes, Clarence. A man down on earth needs our help. Splendid. Is he sick? No, worse. He's discouraged. At exactly 10.45 p.m. tonight, worth the time, that man will be thinking seriously of throwing away God's greatest gift. Oh, dear. His life. Then I've only got an hour to press. Uh, what are they wearing nowadays? We will spend that hour getting acquainted with George Bailey. Sir, if I should accomplish this mission, I mean, might I perhaps win my wings? I've been waiting over 200 years now, and people are beginning to talk. What's that book you've got there? Oh, The uh, Avengers of Tom Sawyer, sir. I was reading when you said it. Oh, fine book. Excellent. Well, you do a good job of George Bailey, and we'll see about your wings. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, if you're going to help George, you'll want to know a little something about him. Look, see the town? Why, yes. 
a group of young boys sledding down a snow-covered hill onto the ice. This is amazing! Yippee! <laughs> Who's that? That's a problem, George Bailey. Oh, boy. That's him when he was 12 back in 1919. Something happens here that you'll have to remember the uh, And here comes the scare baby himself, my kid brother, Harry Bailey. I'm not scared. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Yippee! Help! Help! Oh dear, Harry's fell through the ice. I'm coming, Harry. Make a chain, baby. A chain. So his brother fell through the ice, but George saved him. Yes, Clarence. And ever since, George has had a bad ear. All that icy water in his head. Bad ear. Yes, sir. The other event came a few months later. George took an after-school job at Old Man Gower's drugstore. It's me, Mr. Gower. George Bailey. You're late, George. Yes, sir. Hello, George. Hello, Mary. Hello, Violet. Two cents worth of shoelaces, Violet? Mary was here first. Well, I'm still thinking. Shoelaces? Please, Georgie. I like him. Well, you like every boy. What's wrong with that? There you are. Bye, Georgie. See you later, Mary. Made up your mind yet? I'll take chocolate. You with coconuts? I don't like coconuts. You don't like coconuts? Say, brainless, don't you know where coconuts come from? Well, look at here, from Tahiti, Fiji Islands, the Coral Sea. What's that you've got there? A new magazine I never saw before. Well, of course you never. Only us explorers get it. I've been nominated for membership in the National Geographic Society. Let me get your ice cream. Is this the ear that you can't hear on? Oh, George Bailey, I'll love you till the day I die. I'm going out exploring someday. You watch, and I'm going to have a couple of harems and maybe three or four wives. Wait and see. <laughs> George, George. Yes, sir? You're not paid to be a canary. Yes, sir. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, Mary. What was that piece of paper George just picked up? It's a telegram from Mr. Gower. He found out this morning that his son died of influenza. Oh, awful. Yes, and he spent the afternoon drowning his grief in whiskey. Mr. Gower, do you want something? Anything? No. Anything I can do back here? No. I'll get them, sir. What's this bottle, Mr. Gower? Never mind that. Take, take those capsules over there. Mrs. Blaine's. Yes, sir. They have the diphtheria there, haven't they, sir? Uh. Is it a charge, sir? Yes, charge. Mr. Gower, I think that. Oh, get going. Yes, sir. Mr. Gower. What is it? Mr. Gower, that bottle you used, you put something wrong in those capsules. Who do you think you're talking to? Oh, you're hurting my sore ear. Did you hear what I said? Get out of here! Mr. Dowell, you don't know what you're doing. You put something wrong in those capsules. I know you're unhappy. You got the telegram and you're upset. It wasn't your fault, Mr. Gower, but look, Mr. Gower, look, look. This bottle, you, you, this bottle you used to make up the capsules is poison. Poison. Don't hit my sore ear again. Poison from George. Only George. one of us to make sure, Mr. Gower. I won't tell anyone. I know what you're feeling. I won't ever tell a soul. Hope to die, I won't. George. Did he ever tell anyone about those pills? Not a soul. Did he Did he ever marry that girl? Did he ever go exploring? We'll get there soon enough, Clarence. When George Bailey grew up, he wanted to go to college, but there just wasn't the money. So he worked four years in the Building and Loan Association. Building and Loan Association? George's father was in the Building and Loan Business, along with George's uncle Bill. George! Where's the combination for the state? You wrote it down so you wouldn't forget it. Oh, that's right. Where? <laughs> You're wrong, Uncle Billy. Oh, thanks. Lovable fellow, just forgetful as well. Uh, who's that? That's Henry F. Potter, the richest and meanest man in all the county. Peter, Potter's here. Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey. Nothing quite so loathsome as a family business. Now, Peter, you know why I'm here. On a very tight schedule. Family to evict at three. Okay then, Mr. Potter, here's the thing. I just need a little more time. Just 30 short days. I'll take up that 5,000 somehow. Have you put any real pressure on those people of yours to pay their mortgages? That's so hard, Mr. Potter. A lot of people are out of work. Then foreclose! I can't do that. These families have children. Not my children. But they're somebody's children, Mr. Potter. Are you running a business or a charity war? Oh, not with my money. 
Mr. Potter, what makes you such a hard skull character? You have no family, no children. You can't begin to spend all the money you've got. So I suppose I should give it to miserable failures like you and that idiot brother of yours to spend it for me. He's not a failure. You can't say that about my father. George, George. You're not. You're the biggest man in town. Ask anybody. All right, thanks. I'll talk to you tonight. Don't let him say that about your father tonight. What kind of business are you running here? Good God, man. George worked for his father, saving enough to see him through the university. That summer, though, he was going to Europe. George got a job on a cattle boat and was ready to do a little traveling before college. Old Man Gower surprised him with the gift of a great big suitcase. On his way home from the store, he ran into his friends Ernie the cab driver and Bert the guy. Hey, Ernie. Hi, hey, George. Hi, Bert. Hey, George. What's that suitcase for? I'm a rich tourist today. How about driving me home in style? Oh, sure, your friends. Hop the cab. And if you can't trade it, I can tell her hat. Good afternoon, Mr. Bailey. Looks like you're ready to get out of here. Hello, Violet. You look good. What's some dress you got on there? Oh, this old thing? Why, I wear this one. I don't care how I look. See you later. How would you like? Yes. Want to come along? <laughs> Show you the town. All in the know what you think I'll go home and uh, see what the wife's doing. Family band. <laughs> George saved up money to go away to college. His bags were all packed and he was all set to go. Oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy. It's hard to realize it's the last night in the Bailey boarding house. We're sure going to miss you, George. I'm going to miss you too, Pop. Say, what's the matter? I'm tired. Oh, I had another tussle with old Henry Potter today. Oh. I thought when we put him on the board of directors, he'd ease up on us. I don't know what you mean, that old money-grubbing buzzard anyway. Oh, he's a sick man. Frustrated and sick. Sick in his mind, sick in his soul, if he has one. Hates everybody that has anything he can't have. Mostly us, I guess. George! George! Can I borrow your tuxedo studs? Yeah, yeah, help yourself here. Well, uh, where are they? In your suitcase? I'm not taking a tuxedo on a cabin boat, you know. Say, where do you get that fine piece of luggage anyway? Uh, Mr. Gow, going away present. One of these days, you're gonna see that bag all covered with travel labels. Italy, Baghdad. Hey, there's a dance tonight. You wanna come? What, be bored to death? Well, you couldn't want a better death. Lots of pretty girls. All right, I'll see you later. I wish we could take Harry with you, George. We have all that all figured out, you see? Harry will take my job for building a mall, work there for years, then help him. He's pretty young for that job. He's no younger than I was. You were born a little, George. I suppose you've decided what you're going to do when you get out of college. Well, you know, what I've always talked about to him. Building things, designing buildings, plan modern cities. So after that first million before you're 30? No, also after half that in cash. Of course, it's just a hope, but... You wouldn't consider coming back to the building alone, would you? I know it's early to talk about it. I couldn't face being cooped up for the rest of my life in a shabby little office. I'm sorry, Pop, I didn't mean that remark, but this business of nickels and dimes and spending all your life trying to figure out how to save three cents with the length of a pipe, I'd, I'd go crazy. I want to do something big and something important. You know, George, I feel that in a small way we are doing something important, satisfying a fundamental urge. It's not too much for a man to want his own roof and walls and a fireplace. And we're helping him get those things in our shabby little office. Yeah, I, I wish I felt... I've been hoarding pennies like a miser in order to... Most of my friends have already gone to college. I, I just feel like if I don't get away, I must. Yes. Yes, you're right, boy. This town's no place to live if you aren't willing to crawl to Potter. You get yourself an education, then get out of here. I'm glad you see what I'm talking about. Say, I think I'm gonna go down to Old Main Street. Last night in town, and we'll have a good time, son. Who's that? Why, that's my own The little girl from the candy car? That's right. Hello, George and Forgy. Hello, bye. What gives? Nothing. Where are you going? Oh, I'll probably end up at the library. George, you don't you ever get tired just reading about things? Yes. What are you doing tonight? Not a thing. Will you game by? Why don't you see me make a night I bet with Georgie, what do we do? Let's go out in the fields, take off our shoes, and walk in the grass. Huh? And then, we can go up to Stewart Lake. It's beautiful up there in the moonlight, and we can swim. Then, we can climb Mount Bedford and smell the pines. We can watch the sunrise against the peaks, and we'll stay up there the whole night. Everybody will be talking, and there will be a terrific scandal. George, have you gone crazy? Walk in the grass, in my bare feet? It's ten miles away from Mount Bedford. You think just because you... 
Just forget about the whole thing. Forget about what, George? Nothing, Sam. You remember Mary, don't you? Hi, George. Hi, Mary. Say, you wouldn't mind walking Mary home, would you, George? Of course not. Is that okay with you, Mary? Fine by me. Great, thanks. So, George walked Mary home. Is that important, Joseph? I'd say it is, because even though she lived only four blocks away, it took her two hours to get there. <laughs> Buffalo gals, would you come out tonight? Come out tonight. Come out tonight. Buffalo gals, would you come out tonight? And dance by the light of the moon. <laughs> Oh boy, just like an orchid, she wins. Beautiful. You know something? If it wasn't me talking, I'd say you were the prettiest girl in town. Well, why don't you say it? I don't know. Maybe I will. How old are you anyway? Eighteen. Eighteen? Oh, too young or too old? Just right. Your age fits you. Hey, look where we are. Oh, the old Granville house. Yeah, I gotta throw a rock. Oh no, George, don't. I love that house. Well, no, don't you know about deserted houses? You Make a wish, then throw a rock. Yes, but George, it's, just, it's such a lovely old place. I wish I lived there. In there? I wouldn't live there if I was a ghost. Now, watch this. <laughs> How about it, huh? Pretty good shot, huh? Broke a window. What's your wish, George? Well, not just one wish, Mary. A whole hatful. I'm shaking the dust off this crummy little town off my feet. I'm going to see the world. Italy, Greece, the Parthenon, the Colosseum. Then I'm coming back here and go to college and see what they know. And then, then I'm gonna build things. I'm gonna build airfields. I'm gonna build skyscrapers a hundred stories high. I'm gonna build bridges a mile long and then I'm gonna... Hey, what, you're gonna throw a rock too? <laughs> That's pretty good. What'd you wish for, Mary? Oh, no. If I tell you, it may not come true. Hey, Mary, come on. What'd you wish for, huh? Do you want the moon? All you gotta do is just say the word, Mary. Okay. I'll take it. And then what? Then what? Why, I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down, and you could swallow it, and it all dissolves, see? And the moonbeams would shoot out of your fingers, and the toes, the ends of your hair, and the... Am I talking too much? Yes! Why don't you kiss her instead of talking her to death? <laughs> Who's that? It's old man Collins on his front porch. Nah, uh, youth wasted on the wrong people. Hey, hey, hold on, mister. You come back out and I'll show you some kissing and then put the hair back on the top of your head. You come back out here and... George! George! Uncle Billy? George, get in the car quick. Your father's had a stroke. I'm sorry, Mary. I've got to go. George's father died that night, Clarence. So, of course, George couldn't be there. But that fall, just as he was ready to leave for college, the directors of the building alone held a meeting. They were going to appoint a successor. <laughs> I'm all prepared to know that George Gibbon has took a year to help straighten things out here these past few months, and it is greatly appreciated. That means that's all I need you for, George. Good luck to you at school. I know you're anxious to make a train. Yes, I have a taxi waiting downstairs. Chairman, I'd like to get to my real purpose. I claim this institution is not necessary to this town. Therefore, Chairman, I make a motion to dissolve the building loan and turn its assets and liabilities over to the receiver. Oh, it is too soon after Peter Bailey's death to discuss Claude forming the building alone. It was his faith and devotion that are responsible for this organization. I'll go further than that. I'll say to the public, Peter Bailey was the building and loan. Oh, that's fine, Father. Coming from you, considering you probably drove him to his grave. Peter Bailey was not a businessman. That's what killed him. I don't mean any disrespect to him. God rest his soul. He was a man of... High ideals, so-called, but ideals without common sense can ruin this town. What does that get us? A discontented, lazy rabble instead of a thrifty working class? And all because a few starry-eyed dreamers like Peter Bailey stir them up and fill their heads with a lot of impossible hooey? Now I say- Just a minute. Now hold on, Mr. Potter. You're right when you say my father was no businessman, I know that. Why he ever started this cheap penny at building in the first place, I'll never know. But neither you nor anybody else can say anything against his character because his whole life was... Why, in the 25 years since he and Uncle Billy started this thing, he never once thought of himself. Isn't that right, Uncle Billy? He got that right. He didn't save enough money to send Harry to school, let alone me.
But he did help a few people get out of their slums, Mr. Potter. And what's wrong with that? Why, here, you're all businessmen here. Doesn't it make them better citizens? Doesn't it make them better customers? You, you said, what'd you say just a minute ago? That they had to wait to save their money before they even ought to think of a decent home. Wait? Wait for what? Until their children grow up and leave them? Until they're so old and grow up and down that they... Do you know how long it takes a working man to save $5,000? Just remember this, Mr. Potter, that this rabble you're talking about, they do most of the working and paying and living and dying in this community. And is it too much to have them work and pay and live in a couple of decent rooms in a bath? Anyway, my father didn't think so. People were human beings to him. But to you, a warped, frustrated old man, they're cattle. Well, in my book, you died a much richer man than you'll ever be. I'm not interested in your book. I'm talking about the building in Lowe. I know very well what you're talking about. You're talking about something you can't get your fingers on and it's galling you. That's what you're talking about. Well, I've said too much here. You're the board. You do what you want with this thing. Just one more, though. This town needs this measly one-horse institution if only to have some place where people can come without calling a potter. Come on, Uncle Bernie. Sentimental hogwash. I want my motion! They're just coming out of the board meeting now. I'll have to call you back. What happened, George? All we heard was a lot of yelling. Oh, you'll blame until you should have heard, George. They're voting us down now. <sighs> George, get out of here. You missed your boat trip. Do you want to miss college, too? Don't worry about that board. They're shutting us down. So what? I can get another job. I'm only, uh, 55. You're 50. George, George, they're going to put it back. We're still in business. Whippy, we're still in business. We're still in business. That's the point you should, George. They've appointed you to take your father's place. Appoint me? But I'm going to college. Uncle Billy here, he's your man. Well, you can keep him on. Well, now let's get this thing straight. I'm leaving. I'm leaving right now. I'm going to school. This is my last chance. But George, you've got to take it. No will vote with it. otherwise. So, George Bailey didn't go to college. That's right, Clarence. He gave his college money to his brother Harry, and Harry went instead. But what happened to that good-looking girl? You know Mary? Oh, George saw her now and then. Not very often, though, because Mary went away to school, too. Anyway, George waited four years more for Harry to come back and take over the building below. He then he could still see the world. He planned to work in the oil fields of Venezuela. There she blows. Say, Uncle Billy, you know what the three most wonderful sounds in the earth are? Breakfast is served. Lunch is served. Dinner is no, served. No, no, no. <laughs> Anchor chains, plane motors, train whistles. Here's the professor now. Well, if it isn't George Geographic Explorer Bailey. Uncle Billy, how are you doing? Nobody ever changes around here. I'm glad to see you. Hey, where's Mother? She's home cooking the fatted cat. Come on, let's go. Oh, wait, wait. This is Ruth Dagen. Ruth Dagen. Bailey, if you don't mind. Whoa. Well, I wired you I had a surprise. And uh, here she is. Meet my wife. Well, what do you know? What? Well, how do you do? What am I doing? Congratulations, congratulations. Harry, why don't you tell somebody? What's a pretty girl like you doing marrying this two-headed brother of mine? Well, I'll tell you. It's purely mercenary. My father offered him a job. Oh, he gives you and a job. Here is tough one up over. Oh, come on, Ruth. Let's start having you the bags with the fellows. All right. George, about that job. I never said I'd take it. I've been holding the bag here for four years. I don't want to let you down. It's all right, Harry. It's all right. And that night, the homecoming for Harry became his wedding party. Uncle Billy familiarized himself with the spirits. Boy, oh boy, I feel so good. I can spin a pot of time. What do you say if you just point me in the right direction? Right down there. <sighs> this way, huh? All right, Billy, come on, pal. See you later. I'm all right, I'm all right. George? Yeah, I'm out here on the porch, Mother. I just thought I'd get some air. Well, how do you like the new sister-in-law? Well, she's slow. Looks like she'll be Perry on his toes. Yeah, keep him out of Bedford Falls, anyway. George, um, <clears throat> you know that uh, Mary Hatch is back from school? Yeah, yeah. Nice girl, Mary. Mm -hmm. Stop rumbling. Give me one good reason you shouldn't call on Mary. Well, Sam Wayne. Sam's crazy about him. She's not crazy about him. And how do you know that? Did you discuss it with her? Sam is away in New York, and you're here in Bedford Falls. And all's fair in love and war? I don't know about war. All right, Mother, I think I'll 
Go out, find the girl, and do a little passionate necking. Oh, George! Bye, Mrs. Bailey. By the way, do you want any books at the library? The library? George, you go see Mary here. Hello, George. Hey, Mary. I just happened to be passing by. Well, your mother just phoned and said you're on your way over to pay me a visit. <laughs> My mother just called you. How did she know? Oh. Well, I didn't tell anybody. I just went for a walk and happened to be passing by. What do you do? Went for a walk. That's all. When did you get back? Tuesday. Would you like to come in? I guess it's not here. Say, where'd you get that dress? Oh, do you like it? It's all right. I thought you went back to New York with <laughs> Sam and Francis and most of them. Oh, I went there a couple of vacations, but I don't know. I guess I was homesick. Homesick? For Bedford Falls? Yes, and my family, and everything. Would you like to sit down? Sure, for a minute. I still can't understand it, though. I didn't tell anybody I was coming here. Well, would you rather leave? No, I don't want to be rude. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice about Harry and Ruth, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's all right. Well, don't you like her? Well, of course I like her. She's a peach. Oh, it's just marriage in general you're not enthusiastic about, huh? No. Marriage is okay for Harry and Sam Wainwright and you. Mary! Mary! Who's out there with you? It's George Bailey, Mother! George Bailey? What does he want? I don't know. What do you want, George? Me? Not a thing. I just came to get warm. He's making violent love to me, Mother! <laughs> You tell him to go right back home, and don't you leave the house. Sam Wainwright promised to call from New York tonight, didn't he? Your mother didn't, you know, I didn't come here for, to, to... Well, what did you come here for? I don't know. You tell me you're the one who has all the answers. How do you tell me? Why don't you just go home? That's where I'm going. I don't even know why I came here in the first place. Mary! The telephone! Oh, great. Gee, it's good to hear your voice again. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Sam. There's an old friend of yours here, George Bailey. Meet old Mossback George. Yes, old Mossback George. Gee, aw. Put him on. Wait a minute, I'll call him. George! He doesn't want to speak to George, you idiot. He <laughs> does so. He asked for him. George, Sam wants to talk to you. Hello, Sam. Hey. Find out who you are. What are you trying to do? Steal my girl? What do you mean? Nobody's trying to steal your girl. No, wait a minute. I want to talk to both of you. Tell Mary you're on the extension. My mother's on the extension. I am not. We can both hear you. George, just put your head a little closer. Okay. There, that's better. We're listening, Sam. Well, I have a big deal coming up, and it's going to make us all rich. George. You remember that night at Martini's bar when you told me about making plastics out of soybeans? Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, soybeans, yeah. Well, my father's checked into it, George C., and now he's going to build a factory outside of Rochester. How do you like that? Rochester? Well, why Rochester? Well, why not? Can you think of anything better? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Why not right here in Bedford Falls? You remember that old tool machinery works? You tell your father you can get that for a song, and the labor he wants, too. Half the town was thrown out of work when they closed down. That's so. Well, I'll tell them. Hey, that sounds great. Aw, baby, I knew you'd come through. Now, here's the point, George. I may have a job for you. That is, unless we're still married to the old, broken-down building in love. Oh, Mary? I'm here. You tell that guy I'm giving you the chance of a lifetime, you hear? Says it's the chance of a lifetime. Give me that phone. Are you listening to me, Harry? I don't want any plastics. I don't want any job. And I don't want to get married. Ever. To anyone. You understand that? I want to do what I want to do. And you're not. You're not. Hey, Mary. George. Mary, I love you. George, I love you too. We'll return to WBFR, Playhouse of the Air's presentation of It's a Wonderful Life, in just a few moments. But first...
Gentlemen, does your hair resemble a dried out bird's nest full of dandruff flakes? Do you plaster your hair down like a cheap gigolo smelling to high heaven? Pee What a stink! When girls get a gander at the tip top of your noggin, do they go... Ew! Well, here's a friendly hint that may just help you out in the romance department. <sighs> Starting tomorrow, why not try Bremel hair tonic? Yes siree, you'll be headed for success with Bremel groomed hair. A success with the gals and on the job. Bremel always keeps hair looking mighty attractive. Always in place. A real sex appealer. <laughs> Bremel hair tonic does lots more than keep your hair handsome looking. Bremel the swank hair tonic makes your filthy bird's nest gleam. A little dab will do ya. All the pretty gals will scream. Not only will dames love it, your barber will shut out with glee. Bramble the swank care tonic, your dandruff will be history. Buy some Bremel today, your hair will thank you. And now, back to It's a Wonderful Life. George and Mary were married, and following the wedding and reception, George's old pal Ernie the cab driver drove the happy couple to the train station. Hey, where did you go on this here now, honey? We're going to shoot the works, sir. The whole week in New York, the whole week in Bermuda, the highest hotels, the oldest champagne, the richest caviar, the hottest music, the prettiest wife. Here's the kitty, Ernie. Two thousand dollars! I feel like a bootlegger's wife! <laughs> so you're finally getting out of Bedford Falls, huh? Then what? Then what, honey? Well, after that, who cares? That does it. Hey, Mrs. Bailey, I haven't kissed hey, you Hey, George, there's something funny going on up there. Huh? See, over there at the bank? It looks like a run. Pull over there a minute, will you, Ernie? George, let's not stop. Please, let's just go straight to the station. Now, wait a minute. I better see what this is. I'll be right back. George, please. George! This is it a holiday? Why are the doors locked? There's a crowd out front. Oh, this is a pickle, George. All right, now, what happened? All I know is the bank, the bank called our loan. I had to all of our cash. All of it? Every last cent. Oh, mackerel. And then, and then I got scared, George, and I, I closed the doors. Well, our charter says we need to stay open until at least six o'clock or we'll lose our license. Get me, George. George, it's Potter. Hello? George. There's a rumor around town. Just close your doors. That's true. No, it isn't. Do you need any police? Moths get pretty ugly sometimes, you know. We're fine. We'll see. Now, George, I'm going all out to help in this crisis. I've just guaranteed the bank sufficient funds to meet their needs. They'll close for a week and then reopen. I may lose a fortune, but I'm willing to guarantee your people too. Just tell them to bring their shares over here, and I am making 50 cents on the dollar. You don't miss a trick, do you, Potter? Well, you're gonna miss this one. If you close your doors before 6 p.m., you will never reopen! Just took over the bank building. Open the door! Help them in. Where's our Just remember, this thing isn't as black as it appears. I have some good news for you folks. Just talk to Old Man Pod and he's guaranteed cash payments at the bank. But what about our money? George, where's our money? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Now please, money. please, wait a minute. Listen to me. You're thinking of this place all wrong. The money's not here. Now wait a minute. Let me tell you. Your money's in people's houses. In the Kennedy house, the McLaren house, your house, and a hundred others. Now, what are you going to do? Foreclose on them? I got $242 here. And $242 isn't going to break anybody. All right, Charlie, all right, now, you'll get your money in 60 days. 60 days? 60 days? Well, now, that's what you agreed on when you bought your shares. I got my money! Old Man Potter's taking over the bank! He'll pay you 50 cents on every dollar! Come this way! 50 cents on every dollar! Now, wait a minute, please, folks, please don't leave. I beg of you not to do this. If Potter gets a hold of your shares, he'd be owning this building, though. He's got the bank, he's got the bus line, he's got the department stores, and now he's after us. Because he wants to keep you living in the shacks and paying the kind of rent he decides to charge. Now, we can get through this all right, but we've got to stick together. We've got to have faith in each other. My husband's up for me 
we need the money. I got doctor bills to pay. I can't feed my kids with faith. Well, how much do you all need? George and I still have some money. We have 2000 from the wedding. Mary, I've got $2,000 here. This is how it's over until the bank reopens. All right, Charlie, how much do you need? $242. Charlie, just enough to tidy over until the bank reopens. I'll take $242. All right, all right. Uncle Billy, give Charlie $242. Okay, all right, Ed, now how much, just to get by? Twenty dollars, I suppose. Now yeah, we're talking. Now, Mrs. Thompson, how about you? But, George, it, it's your own money. Never mind that. How much do you want, Mrs. Thompson? Could I have <coughs> seven, 1750 Seventeen. Bless your heart, of course you can have it. Uncle Billy, give her seventeen fifty. Pay it back when you can now, pay it back when you can. All right, all right, who's next? Look at the clock, look! Five seconds, four seconds, three, two, one, six o'clock. We made it. We made it. Woo -hoo -hoo. Lock that door, Uncle Billy. Boy, we're still in business. We've even got two bucks left. Hey, okay, brother building in just a minute. George, is a call for you. Will you get my wife on the phone? She's probably over at her mother's. Mrs. Bailey's on the phone. I don't want Mrs. Bailey. I want my wife. Oh, <laughs> Mrs. Bailey. Oh, that's my wife. Hello? Sorry, dear. What? Come home. What home? 320 Sycamore. Whose home is that? The Waldorf Hotel. Huh? That doesn't look like the Waldorf. Oh, no, no. Number 320 Sycamore was the old Granville house. The one George and Mary threw rocks at and made wishes. Mary had prepared the house, including a turkey dinner, romantic decorations, and even a marriage bed. Welcome home, Mr. Bailey. Well, Bailey. Remember the night we broke the windows in this house? This is what I wish you for. Charlie, you're wonderful. Yes, sir, that's where they spent their honeymoon. It's where they started their lives together. Mary made the leaky house a home, while George toiled away at the building and loan office, providing houses for people like Giuseppe Martini. Hey, Martini! You rent the new house? Rent? Ha, you hear that, Mr. Bailey? I own this house. Me, Giuseppe Martini. I own my own house. No more we look like pigs in potter's fields. We have something for you and your family, Mr. Martini. George and I bring something for all the new owners. For the Martinis? Come quick. Our first housewarming gifts. Bring the kids. Bread, so that this house may never know hunger. Salt, that life may always have flavor. And wine, that joy and prosperity may reign forever. Enter the Martini castle. Bailey houses were popping up all over the place, mostly owned by people who used to live in potter's fields. Potter had just about enough of that. So a couple of years later, old man Potter decided to call George into his office. Sit down, George, sit down. Have a cigar. Thank you, sir. Quite a cigar, Mr. Potter. You like it? Send you a box. Well, I suppose I'll find out sooner or later, but just what exactly did you want to see me about? George, now that's just what I like so much about you. George, I'm an old man and most people hate me. I don't like them either. It makes it all even. You know just as well as I do that I practically run everything in this town but that little building alone. You also know that for a number of years I've been trying to get a control of it. Or kill it. But nonetheless, you have stopped me. In fact, you've beaten me, George, and that takes some doing. Take during the Depression, for instance. You and I were the only ones that kept our heads. You saved the building alone, and, well, I saved all the rest. Yes, well, most people say you stole the rest. Envious ones say that, George. The suckers! Let's take a look at your side. Young man, 27, 28, making, say, 40 a week. 45. 45. 45. You're some ordinary yokel. I would say you were doing just fine. George Bailey is intelligent, ambitious. He hates the building alone almost as much as I do. He's been dying to get out of town ever since he was born. Young man, the smartest one of the crowd, mind you, who has to sit by and watch his friends go places. Because he's trapped, trapped into frittering his life away, playing nursemaid to a lot of garlic eaters. Do I paint a correct picture, George, or do I exaggerate? What's your point, Mr. Potter? My point is you're the only man in town who's licked me, George. I want to hire you. Manage my affairs. Start you out at. $20,000 a year. 
$20,000 a year. You wouldn't mind living in the nicest house in town, buying your wife a lot of fine clothes, a couple of business trips to New York a year, maybe once in a while Europe. You wouldn't mind that, now, would you, George? What I? You're not talking to somebody else around here, are you? Are you sure you're talking to me? I'm George Bailey, don't you remember? The building alone, remember? Yes, George Bailey, whose ship has just come in, providing he has the brains enough to climb aboard. Well, what about the building alone? Confound it. I'm offering you a three-year contract at $20,000 a year. Is it a deal, or is it? Mr. Potter, I know I ought to jump at the chance, but I, I wonder if you might give me 24 hours to think about it. Sure, you go home and you talk to your wife. In the meantime, I'll drop the papers and soon you'll be managing my affairs. Your affairs? No. No, the answer's no, doggone it. You sit around here and you spin your little webs and you think the whole world revolves around you and your money. Well, it doesn't, Mr. Potter. In the whole vast configuration of things, I'd say you are nothing but a scurvy little spider. Start anew. 
Harrison Dunn. No, George Dunn. What do you want to do? Hawk your furs in that hat? Want to walk to New York? You know, they charge for meals and rent just as the same as they do in Bedford Falls. Yeah, sure. It's a loan. That's my business. Building a loan. Besides, you'll get a job. Good luck to you. I'm glad I enjoyed your money. Say hello to New York. Merry Christmas, George. George! George! Uncle, what's going on? The big examiner's coming today. Today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see accounts payable. What's the matter with you? The money. The 8,000. Uncle Billy, what happened to it? I, I, I don't know. I was going to make a deposit, and when I went to the bank, I didn't have it. $8,000, Uncle Billy. The bank examiner's in our town. It's not our money. It belongs to the depositors. I'm so sorry, George. I just, I don't know what happened. The first place you look is your coat pocket. I told you to put it there when you left. I'm no good to you, George. I'm no good. Let's go then. You have to retrace your steps. We'll leave no stone unturned. And that's George and Billy went looking for the deposit. Mr. Potter had a meeting with the state bank examiner, a Miss Sadie Vance. The whole town turned upside down and the Bailey boys had probably congressional medal and all. I guess they do things like that. Can I get your paper? Go ahead. This is a deposit from Bailey. That old fool Billy Bailey gave me that newspaper. Well, you're gonna deposit it for him, right? To think he'd make such a foolish mistake. I mean, look at how much it is. There's $8,000 here. Oh, what a Christmas present. He doesn't even know it. Just a minute, Potter. I know you've been giving the Baileys a hard time far back as I can remember. I don't have to give answers to you. You're just a state examiner. Yes, I am, but I'm unimpressed by buying off everyone in town. Oh, that's it. You can never buy the Baileys. What? You heard what I said. The Baileys have always stood for something you always wanted and are so jealous of. They're honest. You're fired. I can't bargain. I'm disappointed. And what's more, I'm not going to turn my back. This is stealing from the Baileys. Something like this would certainly cost them to fold. Yes, and after 25 years, Finders keepers, you know that. It's his own fault. Besides, there's not a court in this county that would find me guilty. And we all know that. How's your family, Sadie? My family? I know how little state positions pay. What would you say to a little Christmas bonus? I want no part of this. That's not what I've heard. But you're insinuating, Potter. I will not be turned down. I want you to pay the Baileys a surprise visit. They'll see the records, and they'll be sure. You know the rest. At last, the Baileys will be where they belong, down for good. I know just what to do. And did you put the envelope in your pocket? Yeah, maybe. Uncle Billy, you've got to find that money. Oh, no good to you, George. Do you have any secret hiding place here in the house? I, 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 I've gone over the whole house. You've been in the rooms. I've been lost since I lost your Aunt Laura. Listen to me. Think. I can't think anymore, George. It hurts. Where's the money, you stupid, silly old fool? Do you realize what this means? It means bankruptcy and scandal and, and prison. One of us is going to jail. Well, it's not going to be me. Doctor here. Yes, I called him right away. Is she running a temperature? It's just a teensy one. Gosh, it's 
This old house. I don't know why we all don't have pneumonia. This drafty old barn might as well be living in a refrigerator. Why do we even have to live here in the first place and stay around this measly, crummy old town? George, what's wrong? Wrong? Everything's wrong. You call this a happy family? Why do we even have all these kids? Daddy, how do you spell frankincense? I don't know. Ask your mother. Where are you going? Up to see Zuzu. Hi, Daddy. Well, what happened to you? I want a flower. Where do you think you're going? I want to give my flower a drink. Give Daddy the flower. I'll give it a drink. Look, Daddy, some of the petals came off. Paste it. All right, now, I'll paste this together. There it is, good as new. Give the flower a drink. Now, will you do something for me? What? Will you try to get some sleep? I'm not sleepy. I want to look at my flower. I know, but you just go to sleep, and then you can dream about it. It'll be a whole garden. It will? Uh-huh. Telephone. I'll get it. Hello. Yes, this is Mrs. Baby. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Wilkes. The doctor showed she'll be out by the time for her Christmas dinner. Is that Mrs. Teacher? Yes. Let me speak to her. Hello, Mrs. Welch. This is George Bailey. Say, what kind of a teacher are you anyway? What do you mean sending her home like that half naked? George! Is this the sort of thing we pay taxes for? To have teachers like you? Silly, stupid, careless people who send their kids home and down their clothes on? Oh, that's stupid. Hello? Mrs. Welch. I want to apologize. Hello? Hello? She hung up. I'll hang her up. Now, who do you think you are? Wait. Hello? Who is this? Well, Mr. Welch. Okay, that's fine, Mr. Welch. Gives me a chance to tell you what I really think of your wife. George? You, uh, let me handle this. Hello? Oh, you will, huh? Okay, Mr. Welch, any time you think you're man enough. Hello? Any? Go! Daddy, how do you spell hallelujah? What do you think I am, a dictionary? Jenny, haven't you learned that silly tune yet? You played it over and over again. Now stop it, stop it! George! What are you doing? I'm sorry, Mary. Janie, I'm sorry I didn't. You go on and practice. Pete, I owe you an apology too. I'm sorry. What did you want to know? Nothing, Daddy. What's the matter with everybody? Janie, go on. I told you to practice. Now go on, play. Oh, Daddy. George, why must you torture the children? Why don't you? Daddy. Where's Daddy going? Head for 247, please. Is Daddy in trouble? Yes, Pete. Can I pray for him? Yes, Janie. Me too. You too, Tommy. Hello, Uncle Billy. So that's it, George. Short eight thousand dollars in the books, huh? Please, Mr. Potter. I'll pay any sort of interest if, if you still want the building alone. You say it was lost. Did you notify the police? No, sir. I haven't done that yet. Harry's house coming tomorrow. Well, why did you come to me? What about your good friend, Sam Wayne? I can't get a hold of him. He's in Europe. What kind of security would I have, George? What collateral? I have some life insurance. A fifteen thousand dollar policy. How much is your equity? Five hundred dollars. And you want eight thousand dollars? Look at you. You used to be so happy. You were going to go out and conquer the world. You once called me a warped, frustrated old man. What are you but a warped, frustrated young man? Crawling in here on your hands and knees for help. No securities, no stocks, no bonds. You're worth more dead than you are alive. Why don't you go to those riffraffs you love so much and ask them for help? Don't do anything, Mr. Potter. Please. Please help me. My wife and kids. You know what I'm going to do for you? As a stockholder of the building and loan, I'm going to call the state examiner to get a warrant for your arrest. That misappropriation of funds, manipulation, malfeasance. Mr. Potter, please, you can't. They can't arrest me. Go on and run. You can't hide in a little town like this. Merry Christmas, George. In jail.
And now, more from our sponsors. Are you guilty of careless driving because windshield bug spots dulled your vision? Yes, I'm guilty. Stop straining to see through a bug splattered windshield. Duck's toilet cake gets the squashed bugs off quickly, even when the sun has baked them into the glass. Remember, you need a clear vision as well as good brakes to avoid accidents. You'll find Duck's toilet cake leaves the glass polished so crystal clear, you hardly know it's there. I feel so much safer after I clean my windshield with Duck's toilet cake. It leaves no dangerous oily film to pick up dust and make night driving difficult. The Duck's toilet cake, the soap of 100 uses. You better wash high, you better wash low, behind your ears to I'm telling you so. Duck's toilet cake is cleaning a town. It washes up cars, it washes up bars, and out in LA it washes up stars. Duck's toilet cake is cleaning up town. It's found in every bathroom. From sea to shining sea, it's used by our dear president, and it's used by you and me. You better wash high, you better wash low, behind your ears too, I'm telling you so. Dark soil cake is cleaning up town. Dark soil cake is cleaning up town. Dark soil cake. Duck's toilet soap today. Keep it in your car. And now, the dramatic conclusion of It's a Wonderful Life. <coughs> Merry Christmas. Glad you come. How about some of that good spaghetti? We got it. Where's George, sir? Where? After running out of Carter's <coughs> office, George ended up at Martini's bar. He's just sitting there. Who is he saying? Who is he? God, God, dear Father in heaven, I'm not a praying man, but if you're up there and you can hear me, show me the way. I'm at the end of my rope. Show me the way, God. Are you all right, George? You want somebody to take you home? Why do you drink so much, my friend? You don't feel good. Please go on, Mr. Bailey. Bailey, you say Bailey? Which Bailey? This gentleman right here is Mr. Bailey, George Bailey. George Bailey, huh? And the next time you talk to my wife like that, you'll get worse. It is enough she slaves away teaching your stupid kids how to read and write. You got You get out. out of here, Mr. Welsh. You get out. You hit my best friend. All right. Mr. Bailey, you okay? Who was that? Mr. Welsh, don't worry. You don't come in this place no more. I'll get something for your face. It's me. I'm all right. Please don't go, George. Please don't. Leave me alone. Just leave me alone. George is headed to the bridge now, Clarence. Can you see him? He, he looks like he's gonna jump. It's time, Clarence. Um, excuse me, you there. Um, have you got the time? My watch is dead. Thanks. Just the same. Help! Help! Help me! I can't swim! Hold it, mister. I'm coming. What in the sand of the two of you doing? This one's nothing for man or beast. Don't get out of the water! Are the two of you all right? Do you need a doctor? No, oh, I'm all right. No, I'm fine. This underwear. I didn't have any, any time to get anything stylish. My wife gave this to me on my last birthday. I passed away in it. Passed away? Oh, I see uh, Tom Sawyer's drying up nicely, too. Who? My book. I left in such a hurry. Brought Tom Sawyer with me. You should really read the new book Mark Twain is working on. How'd you happen to fall in? No, oh, I jumped in. I jumped in to save you? You jumped in to save me. <laughs> well, I did, didn't I? You didn't go through with it, did you? Go through with what? Suicide. It's against the law to commit suicide around here. Yeah. It's against the law where I come from, too. Where do you come from? Heaven. What? I had to act quickly. That's why I jumped in. I knew if I were drowning, you would try to save me. And you see, you did. And that's how I saved you. That's very funny. <laughs> Your lips bleeding, George. Yeah. Got a busting jaw and answer to a prayer. Oh, no, no, no. I'm the answer to your prayer. 
killing yourself for money. $8,000, was it? Yeah, yeah, just things like that. Now, how'd you know that? I told you. I'm your guardian angel. I know everything about you. Well, you look about the kind of angel I'd get. Sort of a fallen angel, aren't you? What happened to your wings? Oh, I haven't won my wings yet. That's why I'm an angel. Second class. Oh, I see. But you see, George, you can help me earn them. By letting me help you. You don't happen to have 8,000 bucks on you. Oh, no, no, no. We don't use money in heaven. Oh, that's right. Keep forgetting. Comes in pretty down, pretty handy down here, Bob. Oh, tut, tut, tut. I found it out a little late. I'm worth more dead than alive. Now, look, you mustn't say things like that. I won't get my wings with an attitude like that. You just don't know all the good you've done. If it hadn't been for you... Yeah. If it hadn't been for me, everyone would be a lot better off. My wife, my kids, my friends. Oh boy, this is not going to be as easy as I thought. It'd all be better if I'd never been born. Wait, what'd you say? I said I'd wish I'd never been born. George, that's wonderful. Wonderful? The idea you just gave me. <laughs> well, you got your wish. You've never been born. Never been born. Exactly. No worries. No $8,000 to get nothing. You simply do not exist. Hey, hey, wait a minute. This ear of mine. Say something else in that ear. You don't have a bad ear anymore, George. Don't you see? You're not the George Bailey you think you are. You're well. Nobody. That's the doggone thing. <laughs> Your lips stop bleeding too, George. What do you know about that? What happened? I need a drink. That's what I need. What about you, Angel? Do you want a drink? Well, I, I don't know. Oh, come on. Come on. We'll go as soon as our clothes are dry. <laughs> our clothes are dry. Hey, so they are. That's funny. That stoke's hotter than I thought. Well, look. Let's get dressed, and then we'll stroll over to Martini's, and then... Oh. Excuse me. I'll stroll. I fly. haven't won my wings yet. That's right. You haven't got your wings. A couple of drinks, and we'll both fly. There's a place to sit down. Oh, hey, then. Clarence, welcome to the best bar of Bedford Falls. Bedford Falls? Don't you mean Pottersville? Pottersville. Where's my team? Look, I'm the boss. You want a drink or don't you? Okay, uh, all right. Double bourbon. Okay, come. Okay. What's yours, Bob? Hmm, I was just thinking of, um, mold wine. Huh? Heavy on the cinnamon, light on the clothes. Talk with you, my lad, and lively now. Hey, look, mister. We serve hard drinks in here for men who want to get drunk fast. We don't need any characters around to give the joint atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> you know, come on, just give me the same as I do. He's okay. Okay, two double bourbon. What about this place? It's all changed. Well, Bedford Falls has changed. You're having your wish, George. You've never been born. Oh, there'll be lots of things you've never seen before. No good, somebody just made it. Made what? Every time you hear a bell ring, it means some angel just got his wings. What did you just say? Well, Clarence, I don't think you better talk about angels around here. Well, don't they believe in angels? Yeah, they believe in them, but you know, it's just... Well then, why should they be so surprised when they see one? What? <laughs> don't mind too many. You just never grew up. How old are you anyway, Clarence? 293. Next night. That does it! I'll do two pixies go through the door or out the window. I don't care. Just go on and get. Where's Martini? Will you tell me? Stop that? asking about Martini! He ain't here! Well, well, well. Look who crawled out from under whatever hole he's been hiding in. It's Mr. Gower. 
Hey, you rummy! Didn't I tell you to never come panhandling around here again? George, look! You see Gower? This is George Bailey. Don't you know me? Will you buy me a drink, Mr. Ch Ch Binky! Throw the rummy out! You got it, boss! That one head spent 20 years in jail for poisoning some kid. If you know him, you must be a jail boy yourself. Binky, here's two more. I'll get a boss. Here, let me help you out. The snow is uh, quite cold. What's with Mr. Gower? Mr. Gower doesn't know you, George. See, George, you weren't there to stop Gower from putting that poison into that prescription. What do you mean I wasn't there? What are you, a hypnotist? Why am I seeing all these strange things here? Don't you understand? It's because you were never born. If I wasn't born, then who am I? You're nobody. You have no identity. What do you mean, no identity? There's no George Bailey. You have no papers, no insurance policies, no cards, no driver's license, no 4F cards, no... Zuzu's petals. What? Zuzu's petals, my, my little girl. Some petals fell off of her flower, and I told her I'd fix it, but they're gone too. Everything is gone. But you've been given a great gift, George. The chance to see what the world would be like if you had never been in it. You're crazy. You're crazy as a bedbug, and you're driving me crazy too. Now look, I'm going home to my wife and my family. Do you understand that? And I'm going home alone. You know the drill. Hands behind your back. Keep your hands off me! Why don't you bust someone else for a change? Hey, officer, where did the building alone move to? Building in what? The Bailey Building alone. It was right up there. They went out of business years ago. Now all that's left is this burlesque house. Not so fast. I know Potter. And finally, that's where I'm a bit. I know. Yeah, I know. Believe me. I know that girl. Who does it? Get out of my way! Oh, taxi. Ernie. Ernie, take me home. I'm going off my nut. Where do you live? I'm not doggone it, Ernie. Don't you start pulling that stuff. You know where I live. 320 Sycamore. Now hurry up. Okay. 320 Sycamore? Yeah. Yeah. Hurry up. Zuzu's sick. Alright. Now look here, Ernie. Straighten me out. Got some bad liquor or something. Now listen to me. Now, you are Ernie Bishop, and you live in Bailey Park with your wife and kid. That's right, isn't it? You see my wife? Seen your wife? I've been to your house a hundred times. <laughs> Look, bud, what's the idea? I lived in a shack in Pottersfield, and my wife ran away three years ago and took the kid. And I never seen you before. In my life. Just step on it. Just give me home. This the place? Of course it's the place. Well, this house ain't been lived in for 20 years. Mary! Mary, you're home! Pete, Tommy, Janie, Susan, where are you? They're not here, George. You have no kids. Where are they, Clarence? What have you done this time? All right, put your hands up. What is this? No quick moves. Come out here, both of you. Bert, thank heaven you're here. Bert, what's happened to this house? Where, where's Mary? Where's my kids? Watch him, Bert. Come on. I'm going to take you down to the station. Bert, listen to me. It's this fellow here. He says he's an angel. Try to hypnotize me. Don't make me use my nightstick. Bert, I hate to do this, but... Run, George, run, George, run! In this morning house. Well? Mother? Mother, what do you want? Mother, this is George. I thought sure you'd remember me. George who? If you're looking for a room, there's no vacancy. Mother, Mother, please try to understand. Something's happened to me. I don't know what it is, but I need a place to stay. Please let me stay here. I don't take it straight from Not a stranger. I know everybody you know. Your brother-in-law, Uncle Billy. You know him? Well, sure I do. When did you see him last? Today, over at his house. That's a lie. He's been in the insane asylum ever since he lost his business. And if you ask me, that's where you belong to! I'm, uh, I'm here again, George. My mother. My own mother didn't even know me. Strange, isn't it? One man's life touches so many others. And when he isn't around, he leaves a pretty big hole, doesn't he? Look, you. I've heard of things like this before. You've got me under some kind of a spell. Well, I'm gonna get out of it. I've got to. I know I talked to Billy this afternoon. How could he be in an asylum? I've got to snap out of this now. Let me think a minute. Bailey Park. There's no Bailey Park. 
If you weren't here to build it, we'll see. This is Bailey Park. Pretty grim. People live here. This is where Bailey Park is supposed to be. What's this gravestone here? Why is the name Bailey on it? That wouldn't be yours. My father's name is on it, but what's this other name? Why is my brother Harry's name on here? Your brother broke through the ice and drowned at the age of nine. That's a lie! Harry Bailey went to war. He got the Congressional Medal of Honor. He saved the lives of every man on that transport. Every man on that transport died. Harry wasn't there to save them because you weren't there to save Harry. You see, George, you really have had a wonderful life. Don't you see what a mistake it would be just to throw it all away? What do I do now, Clarence? What do I do? It's your life, George. What happened to Mary, Clarence? Mary? My wife, Mary. What happened to her if I was never born? <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell you that, George. I don't know how you know the things you do, but please, if you know where she is, just let me see her. That's all I'd need to make a decision. Very well, George, but you're not going to like it. Where is she, Clarence? She's... she's an old maid. Where is she? She's just about to close up the library. There must be some easier way to earn my wings. Is the library closed? Well, it's Christmas Eve. We can't stay open all night. Can I ask you something? I really should be getting home. What is there to go home to? Well, that's none of your business, sir. The library is closed. Maybe you should check out for 20 cents. Mary, I'm sorry. How do you know my name? Only oh, a couple minutes. I told you the library is closed. Please. Just two minutes. That's all I need. I'll do anything. You sound desperate. I'll help if I can. What is it? Isn't this town that your fault? It used to be, but that was some time ago. I wasn't very old when Potter took the town and its name for himself. So, you do know a place called Bedford Falls? I've seen pictures. It looked like a very nice place. But, things have changed and that's with the times. I need to go. Mary Hatch, you live on Reed Street, the white Victorian. Your bedroom is at the top of the stairs and turn to the left. You have an older brother, Marty, and you live with your mother, Edwina. How do you know all of this? What are you, some crazy man? Stop it, I'm leaving. Don't you know me, Mary? Just let me touch you. Shit, let go of me, please. The house you wish for. Don't you remember? I told you, I don't know you. Just let me go, officer. Don't you know me? You must, Mary. It's George. Don't you know me? Let me go. Oh, Mary, please, don't do this to me. Please, Mary, help me. Where are our kids? What? I need you, Mary. Help me, Mary. Get away from me! Help! Help! Police! Mary, it's George! Please, Mary, you're my wife! Ah! Clarence! Clarence, where are you? Help me, Clarence. Give me back. I don't care what happens to me, only give me back to my wife and kids. Help me, Clarence. Please, please! I want to live again. I want to live again. Please! Oh, God, just let me live again! George? Is that you, George? Now you get out of here, Bert. Get out of here. You come in any close and I'll hit you again. What the Sam hell are you yelling for, George? Come on! George? George, Bert, do you know me? Know you? I've been looking all over town for you. Where are you back? Bert, Bert, I'm alive again, Bert. You sure you're all right? Your mouth is bleeding. It is? Hey, my mouth's bleeding. Bert, look at the blood come out of there. What'd you... Susan's petals. Susan's petals, there they are. What do you know about that? Merry Christmas, Bert. Well, Merry Christmas, George. Get in the car and I'll take you home. Okay, well, Bert, do that and turn the siren wide open. Merry Christmas, Bedford Falls. Hey, Merry Christmas, you wonderful old building alone. Merry Christmas, Mr. Potter. Give me! Mary, Mary, I'm home. Have you seen my wife? Hey, what is this? These people, these reporters. Hey, Merry Christmas, reporters. Mr. Bailey, there's a deficit. I know. $8,000, I bet, huh? Good, George, I got a little paper here. I bet that's a warrant for my arrest. Isn't it wonderful? Merry Christmas. Hey, where's Mary, you know? Look at this wonderful old drafty house. Isn't it wonderful? Where's Mary? Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas Daddy. Daddy! Merry Christmas, Daddy! Pete, Janie, Tommy, I can't show up. Where's your mother? 
She went looking for you with Uncle Billy. Daddy! Oh, Susan, Susan, my little change just happened. How do you feel? Fine, Daddy, not a smidge of temperature. Not a smidge. Hallelujah. George, darling. It's Mommy, Mommy's home. Mary. George, where have you been? Oh, George. Mary, let me touch you. Oh, you're real. Oh, George. You have no idea what's happened to me. Well, you have no idea what's happened either. Come on, George, quick, they're on their way. Who's on their way? The police department, the FBI, the National Guard? I'm alive again, Mary. Listen, I'm alive again, Mary. Okay, now come in here now. Now you stand right here by the tree. Right there, and don't move, okay? Don't move. I can hear them now, George. It's a miracle, it's a miracle. Come in, Uncle Billy, everybody, in here. Isn't it wonderful? Mary did it, George. Mary did it! She told a few people you were in trouble and they scattered all over town collecting money. They didn't ask any questions, just said, if George is in trouble, you can count on me. And you never saw anything like it. What is this, George? Another run on the bank? Here you are. Merry Christmas. The line forms to the right. Mr. Gower, Merry Christmas. Mr. Martini, step right up now. I busted the jukebox, too. Mr. Gower. I made the rounds on my charger account. I have a thick. I'm not going to go, George. I changed my mind. I wouldn't have a roof over my head if it wasn't for you, George. Here you I'm go. Two hundred and forty-two dollars. I've been saving this money for a divorce if I ever even get a husband. <laughs> Merry Christmas, George. Merry Christmas, Mother. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Quiet, everybody. Quiet, quiet. A telegram from London. Oh, London. Mr. Gower cables you need cash. Stop. My office instructed to advance you up to $25,000. Stop. Hee haw and Merry Christmas. Sam Wainwright. Hey, George, how are you? Hey, Harry. Mary, looks like you got here too late. Mary, I got him here from the airport as quickly as I could. The fool flew all the way up here in a blizzard. Harry, how about your banquet in Washington? Oh, I left right in the middle of it as soon as I got Mary's telegram. Well, how about some wine? Great idea. A toast to my big brother George, the richest man in town. What's this book, George? I'm sorry. Well, look, there's an inscription. George, remember no man's a failure who has friends. Thanks for the wings. Love, Clarence. What's that? That's a Christmas present from a very dear friend of mine. Look, Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. That's right. That's right. Good boy, Clarence. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of all night sign? This has been WBFR, Playhouse of the Air's presentation of It's a Wonderful Life. The WBFO Playhouse is brought to you this and every week by Bremel Hair Tonic and Duck's Toilet Cake. Please stay tuned for a program of popular holiday music. This is Freddie Fillmore signing off for WBFR in New York City and wishing you and yours a very Merry Christmas. Good night. We'll take a call.